Hey, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby, and today it is Wednesday at 8 something a.m. And we are, according to all reports, supposed to be getting the, for real this time, the Bitcoin spot ETF approval. And so I wanted to talk about what's going on, where my head is at, how I am kind of like playing this news, because there's a lot of debate between crypto Twitter and just people in the crypto space and non-crypto space about like what this means. Is this a buy the rumor, sell the news situation? Does this mean that, you know, this is the Pico top of, of Bitcoin for the next four years? And so I want to talk about all of that and a little bit more in terms of uh, a really interesting tweet from uh, Ansem on Twitter, a Twitter poll that I think really goes to show the potential benefit of patience in the crypto market and just the mindset of so many people within this space. So we're going to talk about all that and more in today's episode. And so just to set the stage as of recording this, it's like eight ish AM right now on Wednesday, January 10th. And Eric Balchunas, who if you don't follow, but you probably do if you at all are on Twitter and care about this Bitcoin ETF, but he tweeted this at 730 this morning. He said, happy ETF approval day for real this time to those who celebrate. As far as we know, it's all systems go in all caps. So it seems positive. Most likely is that we see formal approvals ballpark today around 4 to 6 p.m. with the Derby starting on Thursday. We are ready at Bloomberg getting DES pages up as we speak. Um, And when he refers to the Derby, what they're talking about here is that they've kind of jokingly or non-jokingly referred to this as the Coin Tucky Derby. Because there are, I think, like close to 10 Bitcoin ETFs that should be getting approved at the exact same time leading to this race. And so as far as things go, Eric Balchunas and James Saford have both been kind of new guys that have been really on top of this throughout the entirety of this situation. And so I would, if you don't follow them on Twitter... I would just go to them for a lot of the news. When I think about how I'm generally playing this right now, kind of in my mind, it's basically instead of buy the rumor, sell the news or buy the, you know, buy the news, whatever it is, I am in the position at this point in time that I'm, I bought the rumor. I have been buying crypto and basically I'm I'm fully allocated to this space. Um, And I got really, really bullish around the time of the XRP lawsuit where the SEC kind of got their butts kicked by Ripple or maybe didn't get their butts kicked, but they didn't win. And then the Grayscale lawsuit was also another huge one slash BlackRock applying for the ETF. Like all those things were kind of the rumor to me. And now we're at this point where I am buying the rumor and I'm holding through this process. I think that we are in a situation in which, yes, it could be sell the news in the short term. In the medium to long term, I think the idea of a Bitcoin spot ETF is really, really bullish for specifically Bitcoin, but also for the space because typically a rising tide lifts all boats in this. And so while yes, there may be some opportunity and we've seen some crazy volatility already around the fake uh, Bitcoin ETF approval tweet from the SEC, shout out to the SEC for not using two-factor authentication, very intelligent, very good for a government agency to, to not have some some normal security practices in place for a, for a blue check mark account. But Hey, you know what? That's, that's on you SEC. It's uh, you're supposed to protect the, protect the investors, not, not hurt them, but Hey, you know, that's on you. Um, But so with this, my mind is, is by the rumor, hold the news. I am not really worrying about what happens the day of, I'm not really worrying too, too much about happen. What happens like the first week or so, I think like medium to long term that this is, is super, super bullish. And, Going back to you know some of the things around like kind of the new channel and, and just trying to take some things from the historical context, but I, I think this quote, granted, this dude hated RIP, dude hated Bitcoin, hated cryptocurrency, but obviously a lot of his sentiments around investing, I mean, he's one of the best to ever do it. And his quote is, the big money is not in the buying and the selling, but in the waiting. And I think that is kind of applicable right now. If you've already bought, great, um, you know, for me, like that's where I'm at. I'm not buying and at this point in time because I'm fully deployed, but I'm not selling. I'm just waiting for things to happen. I'm waiting for things to develop. I'm being patient. And that's my general thought process as far as like the market as a whole. Granted, I'm, I'm no expert either when it comes to these ETF applications, ETFs in general. But one of the things that is really interesting and appealing to me too about this Bitcoin ETF situation 
is that we are really like they called it the coin tucky derby and in many cases it is because it's somewhat of a winner take all market or like an 80 20 rule where you had know, 80% of the AUM goes to 20% of the, the issuers. And because of that, and because all of these ETFs are getting approved at the exact same time, it leads pretty much everybody at, at the starting line at the same time and gives really, really strong incentives for these firms to rack up as much assets under management as possible within these funds, because whoever wins the first few months likely is going to be who dominates this market for years and years to come. I think the early money would probably be on BlackRock because of they are the you know, largest ETF issuer um, in the United States and you know, the largest asset manager in the world. But you never know what happens. And there's a lot of really interesting incentives that are, are lining up in terms of lower fees and things of that sort. And for me, like I've always kind of thought that incentives drive the world. And I think that it is very much true. And we are at a point in time where the incentives benefit the investor in multiple ways. The incentives benefit the investor because you have multiple ETFs competing for investors, so they have to lower fees as a differentiator. And so that is good for an investor if you are somebody who's purchasing these ETFs. But outside of that, it is also a good thing for the investor because these funds, these ETFs are going to have to, whether it's a market or use their you know human sales teams to uh, gather up more AUM, whatever it might be. It's, it's a winner, near winner take all market. And I think that, that the incentives of that really align well to get as much assets under management as possible. Does that mean we're going to have trillions of dollars in, in Bitcoin ETFs out the gate? Absolutely not. But is it a, is it a really positive structure that could benefit things? Absolutely. Going to the subject of the Bitcoin ETF, I think one of the interesting things around it has been, obviously, Bitcoin has performed really, really well uh, and has kind of continued to do so. It's now whatever at the 44, 45K-ish ish mark. On the flip side, Ethereum has gone up slightly in USD value, but Ethereum has just gotten absolutely smoked on the ETH BTC pair. And the sentiment around Ethereum right now, or ETH in, in particular, is just like absolutely horrific. At least it was yesterday. As of yesterday, and who knows if this is the bottom, maybe not, who knows. But as of, as of yesterday, ETH BTC is now up like 10% um, from what was a bottom over the past, I think, two plus years, which is, is pretty crazy. But the sentiment is so bad. And I think for me, one of the things that I'm thinking about too, as well as what has happened is like my initial thought on this, I tweeted this back in December 19th. And uh, one of my crypto Twitter friends, Bully, tweeted December 19th, I would not feel comfy holding a bunch of ETH here. Bitcoin is king and has regulatory clarity. ETH ETF is incoming. It's an absolute beast. Um, Soul or something else, you know, might run. And, and that's been generally true over the past, you know, really year plus. Um, Ethereum has been in this really awkward, disgusting middle ground where it's not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the king. If you want to allocate to the king, you all allocate to the king. On the flip side, if you want a ton of upside, ETH is kind of in that middle ground where it's like there's not enough upside still anymore because it's still a multi hundred billion dollar asset. There's not enough upside there to where you're looking at it and being like, oh, I could still probably squeeze a 10 or 20 X out of this. And so like the degenerates or the moderate degenerates or the, the crypto natives don't necessarily look at ETH and say, unless they're very like ETH aligned or dot ETHs or whatever, they don't necessarily look at ETH at that. And so they would look at other all tell ones or even ETH beta plays like uh, Optimism or Arbitrum or you know some of these other L2s that kind of might move in the direction of ETH, but move two, three, four X's as hard. And they have recently too. And so my kind of thought around this, and, and I think I'm not obviously the only one who's, who's thought this, but I said this on December 19th, I said, you know, ETH BTC bottoms the minute the, B, the Bitcoin ETF gets approved. And then I said, you know, ETH might actually benefit more from the, the ETF uh, around the, the Bitcoin approval, because once that happens, the narrative starts of when is the next, what is the next uh, ETF to get approved? And so even if we're in a situation where like, I don't necessarily think an ETF around ETH would be that maybe useful, perhaps, maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't be, but clearly 
if the Bitcoin ETF does get approved, which is supposed to at 4 to 6 p.m. today, the next logical alternative is likely Ethereum. Ethereum already has um, a futures ETF, so I think it's kind of followed the similar path to Bitcoin. So you would think logically, at least, that Ethereum would be the next one. And so the funny thing that happened, which was very similar to Cointelegraph, where Cointelegraph, whether it got hacked or just somebody did some type of manipulation, but when Cointelegraph published that the BlackRock ETF got approved in a couple months ago, Bitcoin ripped from like 27 to 30K in you know, less than an hour, less than five minutes, whatever it was. And even though it was a scam, what happened was it showed people that there was a bid for the Bitcoin ETF. A lot of people prior to the Cointelegraph intern, marketing person, hacker, whatever it is, a lot of people prior to that what their thought was, there is no demand for a Bitcoin spot ETF. The price isn't going to move. It's a buy the rumor, sell the news. And then what happened? You had Bitcoin rip 10% on a Cointelegraph tweet, which showed a lot of people, hey, there is demand here. There is a market for this. And the market does want to move. And while initially people were super mad at the Cointelegraph intern, I think it became a little bit of like a joke on crypto Twitter about how <laughs> that person sacrifice themselves for us because they kind of showed us the way. Now, alternatively speaking, you have what happened with the SEC yesterday, where apparently the SEC was hacked. Twitter did an investigation. The SEC was hacked because they didn't use two-factor authentication, and somebody published a very realistic-looking tweet about a Bitcoin spot ETF approval. And the crazy kind of thing was that Bitcoin went up a little bit, then Bitcoin went down, but immediately what happened is ETH ripped. ETH went from um, or ripped as a how you could rip as a as a multi hundred billion dollar asset, but ETH went up and is now up ten percent on the ETH BTC pairing, and so that kind of showed people too. It like telegraphed a bit. It showed what's going to happen potentially beforehand, and so for me, that's one thing I think I'm I'm looking at. I already am like pretty highly deployed to Ethereum specifically through the. Uh, ETH, the Grayscale Ethereum Trust. And frankly, I didn't really buy that through any specific crazy thesis over Bitcoin other than the ETH -E Trust had a bigger discount to NAV than GBTC did. So I was like, all right, bigger discount to NAV. Maybe I'll buy this. Maybe it'll work well. But so I look at this now and I think this might actually come true. The ETH BTC bottom might actually be in there is a bid waiting for Ethereum once this Bitcoin ETF approval happens. And alternatively, you have a situation in which it was already telegraphed. We already know it's happening. It's, it's kind of starting to happen, but it might continue to do so just as with the Cointelegraph hack in turn, whatever it was, when that tweet happened, it went up 3K, then it pulled back again. But then we've basically been kind of up only from 27K to 45K or so since then. And so I think this is one of those things where it kind of gave us a, whoever this hacker is, whatever they did, it gave us perhaps a glimpse of the future into a, a really strong ETH bid at the moment in which people have been the most bearish. The, there has just been an insane amount of hatred on ETH as an asset, maybe deservedly so, maybe not so. And the last thing I want to talk about isn't specifically relevant to perhaps the Bitcoin ETF, but kind of is in the, in the greater context of things. And this is a tweet from Ansem, who I'm sure a lot of you guys follow on Twitter. And he put out a poll that got 42,000 votes. And granted, this certainly skews crypto Twitter natives because that's who follows Ansem. But he said, which would you rather have? $500,000 right now or $5 million in 10 years? And 55% of people said they want 500K right now. And I think there, there's a couple different ways that you can look at this and, and you can think about this and, and a variety of caveats. Like there are certain places in the world where you could retire instantly off of 500K. If you have extenuating circumstances, if you have a ton of debt, um, if you just need the money this instant. However, I think when, what I'm going to talk about this is, uh, is kind of ignoring those extenuating circumstances and referring to this in the context of investing. Because I think the way in which this poll is, is most of the people answering are saying, do I want $500,000 now? And can I invest that and outperform that 5 million in 10 years? Or do I want to wait and get that 5 million in 10 years? And granted, like, you know, historical numbers in crypto have been such that 
if you got that 500K, you could probably put it to work potentially and exceed that in maybe a few years versus wait 10 years. However, that's probably not the logical thing to do. I believe somebody did the calculation and it's roughly 26%, um, basically making 26% a year compounded for 10 years, which is insane performance. Like if anybody in the traditional finance world could get 26% a year for 10 years compounded, like they would take that in a heartbeat. And so what I think this goes to show and just like where kind of this is in my mind is that most people want to make it right now. I mean, who, who doesn't want to make it right now, right? You want to make as much money as quickly as possible, as easily as possible. That's basically the mindset of crypto Twitter. That is basically the mindset of most investors in the crypto space. Many of them do not lack the patience to let things develop. And as such, you see 55% of people say, hey, I'd rather have 500K right now so I could you know, gamble it potentially versus just wait 10 years and make $5 million and probably be in, in potentially a much better off situation. And so with this, I think, especially as you are around the Bitcoin ETF, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be trying to quote unquote, make it right now. They're going to want to be in a, in a position where they can make that 10 X in a month. And yes, a ton of people make 10 X's 50 X's hundred X's all the time in crypto. But most of the time, those actually require a little bit of patience. And so I would just encourage you to, to kind of think about this in your head and think about what it means for you in your head. And if, you know, would you rather have the 500K right now? You let me know in the comments. Would you rather have the 5 million in 10 years? Um, also, let me know in the comments. But for me, I think this just goes to indicate that many people want the immediate success right now. And if you are a little bit more patient, you don't have to be insanely patient, but if you are a little bit more patient than the average investor in this space, you will likely do well because you have a longer time horizon. So I would just recommend that you try to expand your time horizon, expand your thought process a little bit on that front. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I am now, I have published these now audio wise as well. So if you enjoy this, you want to listen to it on audio and not on YouTube, you can do that on iTunes and Spotify. I'll put links in the YouTube and podcast description. The podcast is now just called Psychology of Crypto. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that if you like the audio preference. Outside of that too, best of luck going into the Bitcoin spot ETF approval. Hopefully things go well. Uh, hopefully it goes well for everybody. I'm excited about it. You know, whether or not we go up or down in the near term, I think it's going to be a really fascinating and interesting time within the crypto space and something that I am super excited for. And if you enjoy this video, certainly hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Really appreciate it. Rob from Crypto Bobby signing out. Have a good one. Peace.